Today is Saturday, June 13th, the three-month anniversary of the first initiatives that went out back on March 13th uh, related to COVID-19. Uh, today is episode number 90 of the Gunnawaga COVID-19 Task Force Daily Briefing. Speaking of anniversary dates and 90, uh, this coming July 11th marks the 30th anniversary of the 1990 crisis. Uh, but sticking with the current crisis at hand, businesses have been open for two weeks and we get an update on how that's going with inspections from Robin Mentor of the task force. The inspections are going well. To date, we have completed 162 inspections in the community. Um, we had a lot of cooperation from all the businesses, which is great because it shows that the business community is willing to work with us collaboratively to ensure the health and safety of the community. Opening day was June 1st and that day was the busiest day mainly with the traffic and the lineups of the non-locals at the businesses. We are doing pop-up inspections at certain businesses just to make sure that they're doing the upkeep of all the health and safety precautions that are in place. So that's going well and we're also answering any questions that businesses may have uh, with regards to the health and safety measures that are in place. So, so we have a good re working relationship with the businesses right now and our inspectors. They're doing a great job. As far as phase two, we have not set a date yet, but we have been in discussion on the businesses that will be opening in uh, phase two. So, so far, the businesses that we do know of that are in discussion are hair salons, barbers, massage therapists, as well as um, outdoor fitness activities. So anything not within a gym, but, but gyms that can operate outdoors. We had posted information on the KMHC website, so those businesses can go on there to check um, whatever um, specifications that they may need for the health and safety to open safely. What's important is we want to have the health check in the community completed before we go ahead with opening the second phase. So the health check began on June 9th and this is going to help guide our direction in moving forward with phase two. We're going to be posting soon outdoor fitness activity um, health and safety measures so that will be posted in the coming days. Other than that everything is going well. The businesses are, uh, are taking all the safe, uh, health and safety precautions um, and implementing them in their businesses. Now Robin, you know the task force asked us to change the show a little bit and they wanted to get more perspectives on the pandemic from different kinds of people. Uh, Earlier we saw Geraldine stand up, Brent Horn had a video of how the elders are doing at the Elders Lodge. We heard from the patients at the Cattery Hospital. And now we have another perspective. The task force has always given us directives and uh, recommendations which keeps us home and keeps us here in Ganawage. But many of us have to leave for food. We're still very reliant on the outside for food and a group of people are trying to change that. Last year, the Collective Impact Initiative consulted the community and asked, what's our priority as a collective? The number one answer, food sovereignty. So my garden experience, is, since I was a boy, I learned to, uh, to plant and garden with uh, watching my grandfather and my grandmother and uh, uh, different things and habits uh, that uh, my grandfather did. I to incorporate them today and into what I'm what I do. Guego is a guego, that nigo rio, you jets, Lazarde walks an ozade, then a gahnawag in the wagano. Waganyatu, then a wagatsanun in a ga gijanu. A ganto, you go yanto, ne jun hekwa, the needs the a guego scutch ne, you go yote. Starting working here was was really nice to. Uh, actually get some real work in and uh, have my hands in the soil. It's, uh, it's eye-opening to see all these things that uh, that we do. You see, you put in all the hard work, you gotta till the dirt up and fix all the soil, and you put those seeds in the ground, and it's really rewarding when you finally see that first sprout come up, and then you start to see everything else starting to come up as well. So every day we're working here, it's good company, we're all enjoying each other. We're all learning a lot. There's the uh, pole beans. These are uh, Mohawk pole beans. From Ganawagi Mohawk. Ganawagi Mohawk uh, pole beans. Yeah, well, this was an uh, initiative from uh, Collective Impact. Uh, we consulted with uh, the whole community and uh, 
they supported this initiative and uh, I'm f fulfilling the wishes of the people. And what I tell people that what I'm doing, I'm learning as I touch the ground, that I'm trying to make my ancestors proud. Like, you're supposed to think seven generations ahead, while well, also to all those other relatives have also had that same way of uh, living. So to me, uh, by doing this, I feel like I'm honoring my relatives and that uh, it's my responsibility at this time and have like the youth coming in and seeing how to do uh, planting, especially the three sisters, which is the main thing that I'm interested in, the corn, bean and squash to get the way we did at one time with the raised beds. So I'm gonna try it this time, this year, and we'll see how it goes and it's all, it'll all be ready for next year also. So this whole initiative uh, helped by uh, the uh, CIF, the funding, and uh, KSCS, which was uh, a lot of help to get it going. So it's just like uh, we're planting seeds, the whole initiative is a seed, and we'll see what comes out of it. I'm really happy to see this uh, very fine project uh, that Randy Cross uh, approached me on there sometime in uh, the early winter, and and it came, now it's come to life thanks to the initiative and uh, uh, employing uh, these young uh, young uh, younger people, and it's it's really nice to see uh, the the work and their involvement. It, it's really it's. You know, it's encouraging because these young people are, they're the future, you know, and uh, it wasn't long ago I was their age, and now I'm three times their age, and it just goes like that. But that's what you learn, and you put your hands into the dirt like this young guy is doing, you know. There may be a time he might let it go, but he'll always return, and he'll always have this knowledge because he's put his hands in, in into the ground. When the, uh, when all this pandemic started happening uh, I seen a lot on not on mainstream news but you see it on like uh, on the internet and everything you see uh, they were getting rid of all this food they were throwing it out tons of squash and killing chickens and everything and I was starting to think like people here what if we run out of food you know who's gonna have put the food on our tables so I think that opened a lot of people's eyes and uh, since then since it all started I've seen so many people starting their own gardens and so we're kind of duplicating what worked in the past for thousands of years for our people and hopefully we could get back to it and that the future will look very bright. It's very important that we have our own nutritious food stored away. Uh, if the stores were supermarkets closed, then we wouldn't last too long. So it's like we're at, right now we're at our infancy of doing this type of planting and hopefully my hope is that it could carry on with the younger people and continuing this and where we would have a lot of food uh, to be used for the whole year to be used in ceremonies uh, emergencies so it's uh, there's a hope in there like every time you put a seed in you don't know what's gonna come out of it it's uh, returning uh, to uh, to our ways that somehow seem to have gotten uh, maybe kind of forgotten about and the realization with the things going on in the world today and we don't even know what the future is going to be but if we put our hands into the soil and work at it and look at the, the beautiful we, we planted uh, two weekends ago look at the corn and there's squash growing and now we're going to put beans on there and so it's it's very important and we're quite fortunate that we there are still people that have the knowledge about these things we have young people who want to to work at it and, and carry on these traditions so we're maintaining our traditions we're maintaining our culture uh, we're incorporating language we're incorporating all traditional languages we spoke in Onondaga earlier then we're gonna speak in French this afternoon a little bit of Spanish as we're going along Steven said something pretty interesting to me yesterday so he talks about the gardening is it's all hands-on work right he said uh, he said to me we all we all have the same hands as our grandparents and we could do the same things as them so I hope everyone listening can get out there and try and 
and do something in the garden. No matter if it's just one plant, two plants, or a whole garden box. Just try it out, it's not too hard. No, guys, what a great initiative. And you see more and more people taking this initiative individually. Uh, you see people hunting more even, uh, fishing more. And uh, I've never seen so many raised gardens. You know, just on my way in here, I passed by the Longhouse. They were tilling their garden. Uh, yesterday, I passed by the one on Highway 30. That was nice, looking good. Um, people, if you're, if you're gardening, one of the things you should do is uh, look at composting as well. It's your friend in, in, in that initiative. Uh, Gunawaga Waste Management has a lot of tips on that. You could follow them at um, Recycling in Gunawaga on Facebook. They have their own page. They're often giving uh, compost tips and initiatives. And if you want to follow the Food Sovereignty, uh, just search Gunawaga Food Sovereignty and uh, join that group. Uh, sorry about the wind on that piece. That's what happens when you have to keep two meters away with the microphone. Uh, just to end things, I just have one more note. Uh, the Ontario Lacrosse Association uh, officially announced that the 2020 box lacrosse season uh, was officially cancelled. They announced that on June 11th. So I'd like to say uh, sorry to all the players who lost their season. Uh, I threw on the hunter shirt, so hunters, that's for you. Sorry to hear your uh, season's gone. I hope that everybody practices and gets ready for next year. Uh, ironically, the last time Gunawaga's lacrosse season was cancelled was in 1990. Uh, so hopefully for better things in 2021. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have Lisa Westaway and the host Ray Montour of the Cadre Hospital. And in just two more sleeps, the infamous Joe Delaron will be back. Uh, that's it for me. I'd just like to thank the crew for all their hard work and dedication. I'd like to thank all our guests and, of course, you for watching. Yawa.